I think before I continue uh, probing the the fine details of causal sets, it would be very helpful for both me and our listeners to make this all somehow more concrete and connect it to something in the universe. And one of the ways I've found for getting started in this area with string theory uh, that's most helpful is by talking about black holes and thermodynamics since since these areas are are crucial to quantum gravity. And I'm wondering if that seems like the the right place to start for making causal sets concrete as well. Sure. Yeah. That's... Yeah. So how do they connect to to black holes? So we have a in within causal set theory we kind of have a, a proposal for what might what an understanding of the black hole entropy could be. So that's a task which many approaches, as you say, many approaches to quantum gravity um, have set themselves to try to understand why the entropy of a black hole is proportional to its area, and more specifically is equal to its area in Planck scale units up to some factor of order one. So what so what is it? Oh, I should have mentioned actually that the, that's that that result or well, that um, value for the black hole entropy is another of the reasons to appeal that, that points towards discreteness because it it suggests that there's something discrete going on at the at the at the horizon of a black hole because it's simply the num if you imagine tiling the horizon of a black hole with Planck sized tiles, little squares, one Planck length by one Planck length, then just counting the number of them gives you the black hole entropy. So that's It's like a like a hint in the universe. That was very hard to find. It took us many thousands of years. But <laughs> yes. but that points toward discreteness. Yes. Well, I think we have to confess that it's only a theoretical hint because no one has measured the entropy of a black hole, so it's not a it's not a hint that comes from from the laboratory or even the telescope. It's something which, yes, it's a it's on paper. It's a theoretical hint. So, but there's a very strong one that many people take very seriously, and yeah, so it's it plays the role of phenomenology in quantum gravity for sure. Um, mm. So that's yeah. The I I also probably yeah that that. That's certainly one of the strongest indications that there's something discrete going on in, uh, you know, that space time, there should be some kind of fundamental cutoff at some at s close to the Planck scale. Um, so, yeah, so can causal set, wh what can causal sets have to do, have to say about, about black hole entropy? So one idea is that well, the space-time with a black hole in it is the continuum approximation to a causal set that really the underlying entity, the underlying physical substructure to a black hole space-time is a causal set. So just as the fluid description of, of a cup of coffee is a fluid, a continuum description to something fundamentally discrete, which is the molecular the description of the molecules of the of the coffee moving around. Um, so the we postulate that the space time of GR, which has this black hole in it, is this black hole space time, is a continuum approximation to this discrete causal set. Okay. So that's one idea. And then one way forward is to look at that causal set and try to identify within it some part of it, so a sub-causal set, some part of it, which corresponds to the horizon of the black hole and corresponds to it at some moment of time. So when people say the horizon, the area of the horizon of a black hole, they just, they mean 
the area of the horizon at a particular time. Um, so we try to identify in the causal set some, some part of the causal set that corresponds to that horizon. And then we just study that and see, can we say that that sub-causal set has microstructure? And can we say that it has micro states? Can we count those states in a Boltzmannian way, take the logarithm of the number of those states and get something which which scales like the entropy, like the area. That's the that's the proposal, and so we make we're doing that. We we've made some progress on that, so we can look at a causal set which has Schwarzschild as a good approximation. We can identify what we have a proposal for what the sub causal set is that corresponds to the horizon and we can we've proposed certain microstates and counted them and it does scale in the right way where i'm not going to make strong claims at the minute because what we would want would be that all black hole horizons will will have the same the not the counting will give you the same exact it doesn't just have to scale like the area but it has to scale with the same coefficient, so the the co the the ratio between the counting and the the area in in discreteness units has to be the, the same number, the same constant for for every type of black hole, because that's that's what the black hole entropy um, tells us has to happen. So we that we haven't nailed, but yeah, but we're we're approaching. The problem of what the what the microstates are that the black hole entropy counts in this way in causal set theory. Hmm. This notion of the the Planck the Planck area tiling around the black hole, I think it raises a very natural question, at least for me, about causal sets that has to do with just this discreteness of space. And is there a I, I don't know the the right way of putting the question, but is there a hmm, like a distance, like a fixed distance between uh, space time atoms, or do these still fluctuate? These distances still fluctuate in a quantum mechanical sense, or I mean, where the, where does the Planck length fit into these really small scales of causal set theory? It, it's sort of a cluster of questions. Yes, that's a very good. That's a good cluster of questions. So, so one thing to stress is that the discreteness of the causal set is space-time discreteness. So, I'll say a bit more about what I mean by that. But I want to contrast that with the idea that space is discrete. So, the, it's been a folk wisdom mm -hmm. that you can't have discrete space because the Planck length is not a Lorentz invariant concept. So what one means by that is that because of um, what people call Lorentz contraction, if you have something which is one Planck length long, an, an object which is one Planck length long, and you look at that from the frame of reference of someone who's moving, with respect to the object, which is just sitting at rest, say, and someone's moving with respect to it, then it will look shorter. And that doesn't make sense if you think of the Planck length as being the shortest possible length. So so there's a, a contradiction that, that's been pointed to many times and people say, well, you can't have, you can't have a shortest length because that's not a Lorentz invariant concept. It doesn't, doesn't accord with, with relativity, with, um, with special relativity or general relativity, so it's just a no go. It's a no, no go. You can't have discreteness consistent with relativity. But the the key the the get out of this no go result or argument is that the discreteness of a causal set you can have discreteness so long as that discreteness is at the level of space time. So instead of having discrete lengths, you have discrete space-time volumes. So the space-time volume, say, in four dimensions, so I 
our universe. So in four dimensions, you have four dimensional volume. So that's a four dimensional volume would be, for example, a cube of space, one centimeter by one centimeter by one centimeter trans uh, uh, that sweeps out a world volume of one second long. So that would be, that's a four dimensional volume of space time. Um, and that four dimensional volume is one centimeter by one centimeter by one centimeter times one second. That is 10 to the, so a, a centimeter is 10 to the 33 roughly Planck lengths. So that's 10 to the 99 for the cubic, for the cube. And then it sweeps out the space time volume that's one second long. And the second is about 10 to the 44 Planck time. So that's 10 to the 143 Planck units of space time volume, right? That's. <laughs> and the idea of causal sets is that in that, that volume, that region of space time, it's a four dimensional thing. It has roughly 10 to the 43. It's made of, it, it, it's composed of, it comprises roughly 10 to the 43 space-time atoms, these fundamental units of reality with their order relations between them. That's what that region of space-time is, that volume of space-time. And because it's a volume, that is, that's a Lorentz invariant concept. If, if someone sweeps by fast in a rocket ship and looks at this space-time volume and measures its space-time volume, according to them, it's the same volume so volume, space-time volume is a, is a physical concept. It, it doesn't depend on what frame of reference you're asking the question in. Length is, a, is not a physical concept in the sense of, of being invariant, depending on what, what uh, uh, under, you know, different, from different frames of reference. But, but space-time volume is invariant. It's physical. It's, it, doesn't, it doesn't care what whether you're in a rocket ship or not it's the same it's the same um it's the same volume so so you the the uh, so the discreteness of it's important that the the discreteness of causal sets is space time discreteness not spatial discreteness that's one thing to say so what what was your i think that was a preamble to answering a question that you asked which i've now forgotten no i think that you you pretty much covered the question but uh, well it was it was a jumble of questions but i was asking about let's see i was asking about the minimal length between space time atoms oh oh i i think that what you what you might not have answered what minimal distance between space time atoms what i think you might not have answered was whether these distances fluctuate in a quantum mechanical sense Right. So, so in the quantum theory, that is what I think one would have to rephrase the question slightly. And I don't know how to rephrase it because I don't, yeah, we, the quantum theory is the, it's the frontier, you know, it's the, it's the major frontier of beyond which there are, you know, unknown, unknowns. <laughs> um, but the, but in terms of the cause, in terms of a single causal set, the idea of fluctuating distances, it doesn't really come into play because the 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 scale of the discreteness is just the Planck scale. So, in order to ask about fluctuations in space time, you'd have to you have to address the question of this of the of the relationship between the continuum approximation and the discrete entity. So so maybe I can work up to an answer to your question by by describing how how the continuum approximation is a re is related to the causal set. So that, that was actually inherent in my answer to the question about the about the black hole. How are we dealing with you know what kind of causal set are we looking at when we when we say we're we're um probing a causal set that has Schwarzschild space-time as a good approximation to it. So, so the, the discrete continuum correspondence for causal sets is that 
a space time is a good approximation, a space time, let's call it M for manifold. M is a good approximation to a causal set C if C can be faithfully embedded in M. So C is a discrete thing, so there's, there can't be a bijection between them because C is discrete and M is a, is con, is a continuum, so that, that's not going to work. But, but you can embed yeah. the elements of C into M. And it has to be faithfully embedded, meaning that the order relation between the elements of C, the causal order of the causal set, has to accord with the light cone structure. So the if two... If A precedes B in the causal set, then the embedded point A has to be in the past light cone of C, of B. So, so the the embedding has to respect the the causal order and the space time causal order, and it has to be uniform in the volume measure. So, so the the number of causal set elements embedded in any particular region, large enough region of the space-time, has to be approximately equal to the volume of that space-time region in fundamental Planckian units. So that, that, that discrete continuum correspondence, that holds the, the physics of how we're going to recover things that we know how to, how to talk about, how to, how to interpret, like things in space-time, in terms of in terms of the causal set, it's via this discrete continuum correspondence, via this this um, this embedding. Mm 